we're looking at periodic functions. And we're gonna start with the definition. So a function is periodic with the period P if the function, when you add P to the input, does not change the output. So it's just like adding, uh, not adding a P at all. So what that means is it repeats uh, on X values. So the Y values repeat on X values. So first thing we're gonna do is look at what happens if I would add two uh, P in here. So we already have the property that if, if I write F of uh, an input plus P equals just F of the input. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break off one of these, uh, one of these P's right here. So 2P is also known as P plus P. And I want to think about this as grouping up this first input with the second, the plus P outside. Now, that periodic property says if you have a add a P, it's the same thing as not having it. So that means on the next line, we can write this as just F of X plus P. That was applying the periodic property once. Applying that periodic property a second time, because we, we have an input plus P, it's just F of X. So we apply the periodic property twice and we get F of X plus two P equals regular F of X. Of course, if I have three P, F of X plus three P, I could do this above step three times and get to F of X. And so in general, this means F of X plus KP, now K can't be any number, but it can be any integer equals F of X. So you do have to write that for any K in Z. And of course, recall that the Z are the integers, which we can write as negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, dot, dot, dot. All right. So that'll also work for negative K values. <clears throat> and if you're wondering how it looks for negative K values, I'll just do the single uh, X minus P. Now we can only use a property when it's X plus P. So what I'm going to do is, what am I going to do? Let's go ahead and add, we're allowed to add as many uh, P's as we want right here. So let's add 2p, and remember we're allowed to do this because above we said f, we're starting, we're starting here and then going that direction. But because they're equal, you can go either direction. So again, we're starting at f of an input and we're adding 2p right over here, which won't change the output. Now we're going to do a little bit of algebra inside. So we get X minus P plus P plus P. I'm not sure I had to add two P into here. I think one P would have worked just fine. So minus P plus P, those two cancel. So you have X plus P equals the extra plus P doesn't matter. So this is just F of X. All right, so negative P works just as well as positive P. So that means our positive negative integers are just fine. All right, periodic functions with trigonome uh, uh, trigonometric functions. We've already seen that one full rotation is not gonna change your x, y values. And because the all the trig functions are based on the x, y values, what that means is a full trip around the circle represented by the blue two pi right here it's always going to take you back to the same x, the same y value, which means cosine. If you add 2 pi to the cosine input, you're going to get the same x value you had before. Same thing with the sine, you'll get the same y value. Uh, it's true for all six trig functions. However, we're only going to write the first four right here. So we got cosine theta plus 2 pi equals cosine theta sine theta plus 2 pi is sine theta secant, same thing, secant is one over the uh, cosine, so it'll behave the same as cosine here. So it's just secant theta, 
cosecance, the reciprocal of sine. So it'll repeat the same way sine does. All right, these are the trig functions that have a period of two pi. Now tangent and cotangent technically have a period of two pi, but we can actually get a smaller period for those functions. So we're gonna do them separately right now. So what I have here, I added a, I just took an angle theta right here in quadrant one, and I added a half rotation, which is this uh, pi right here. And let me color code it just like we were using before. I'll put my half rotation in blue. So we're just doing a half rotation. Now, what coordinates do we get over here with a half rotation? Well, our x coordinate is going to become negative. It's the same distance from the origin or the same absolute value as the original x coordinate, but it's going to change from either positive to negative or negative to positive. So our x becomes the opposite sign. The y coordinate also goes from if it was positive, it's now negative. And if it was negative, it's now positive. So what that means is x became negative and y became negative. Now tangent theta is y over x tangent of theta plus pi. So I'm using this blue point right here to get these values. It's going to be negative y over negative x, but we just divided negative by negative, so that's the same as just y over x, and that equals original tangent theta. So tangent actually has a period of one pi. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent and it behaves the same way. You're just going to swap the, instead of y over x, it's x over y, but you get that same double negative cancellation in your division. So we'll write below here. So period P is regular pi for tangent theta plus pi equals just tangent theta and cotangent theta plus pi equals cotangent theta. And those are the periodic properties of these trig functions.